Hey guys, Eileen here. Um, I wanted to do the watercolor review I've been talking about doing and also share a couple of recent paintings. So I actually showed the sketch for this one in my last video and this is how it came out. It's 11 by 14. This one's called My Secret Jungle and it's acrylic on, on canvas and it's gallery wrap so it has nice thick sides and I always paint them so that you can just kind of hang it. So that's that one and it's got a little cute little toucan. <laughs> um, and I haven't been hanging out on Facebook as much but I do have now an Instagram account, a Facebook artist page, a deviant art account and also an Etsy store where I'm selling um, all this stuff and um, currently for like the next week or so I'm gonna have a 20% off coupon code and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include all that in the link below so I'm gonna add links for all my accounts as well as for the Etsy store and um, the code for the coupon so um, check it out and let me know what you guys think you know even if you don't want to buy anything just check it out and give me some feedback or something um, basically I've just been kind of doing this for the past month or so so i'm really new at kind of doing this whole you know art thing not the painting but like the business of the art thing so um yeah so it'd be nice to have some feedback so that's that one and then i have a smaller one this one's five by seven this one's called mirabelle and I guess, well, it's not a toucan, but you can kind of say it's a version of a toucan. <laughs> um, and this one has sides painted black. They're also really nice and thick. So that's that one. Just a cute little girl with her creepy bird. Um, and I'm already working on my next painting, so I just wanted to share. So first I do like a sketch, like a small sketch like this big maybe just to kind of get a general idea of shapes and sizes. And then I do like more of a detailed sketch of um, the same size as the canvas and then I transfer it on there. So that's gonna be my next painting. Um, and I also made these little cards. Oh, and I'm selling some prints and um, ACEO artist trading cards. Uh, prints of my paintings in the store as well if you guys want to check those out um, that's actually why I'm having the sale to just kind of celebrate adding a whole bunch of new stuff to the store but these are originals in watercolor um, so just just finished them last night so I'm gonna go ahead and upload them to the store today Oh, you know what? I probably made them all blurry by like holding them up way too fast. So let me just do it again. Hopefully it focuses. Yeah, I'll just do them together so it saves time. There you go. Okay, so and now I'm going to share a little bit about my observations on watercolors. Um, so even though I've been doing mostly acrylics lately, I, I have been doing some watercolors. And... Um, watercolors you know some people think you like start with watercolors and then you go on to like you know acrylics and then you go on to oils but actually watercolors are totally different a completely different skill set and they're very difficult <laughs> they're not like you know easy an easy paint to sort of learn with acrylics are a lot more forgiving because they dry fast and you can paint over them and I haven't done much with oils, but one good thing about oils is you they don't dry, so you can blend for like a whole day if you want. So also very forgiving. Watercolors are not forgiving because once they dry, then within and they dry within like a minute or two, then you're really that's it. That's if you made a mistake, you made a mistake. There's nowhere for it to go, you know. So I'm gonna just share first, and what I'm gonna do is zoom in. So you guys have a better view of this. Now this was an experiment and I followed the same tutorial. Um, this is from Lindsay 
Weich, Reich, something like that, um, The Frugal Crafter on YouTube. And she has these cute watercolor tutorials that you can do in basically 10 minutes. This was a simple one that was like 10 minutes long. So each painting took maybe 10 minutes. And what I did is I did an experiment. I wanted to use different watercolors to make the same painting over and over just to see what would happen. Now this was using Karandi Ash Neocolor. So, and I have them somewhere, but I don't know what where they went, but they have, it's like the 48 color set. And, um, oh, here they are. So this was an, or 40 color set, um, which is plenty. I would not recommend getting more if you want these. Um, so I just kind of put the colors here and then I, um, use them as watercolors by diluting them and um, that did not work well. I don't recommend using them for this purpose as you can tell. Um, and also for the blacks in the tutorial you're supposed to blend other colors that did not work at all so I just used black. Um, so the Karandi Ash were not good for this experiment. Now then I did another experiment. I used the, these are the Twinkling H2Os and then I used a different watercolor to paint the stuff. But for the background I used the Twinkling H2Os. So I don't know if you can see the shimmer. I think the camera is maybe picking it up a little bit. But um, it is, it does shimmer in a pretty way. So let me see, I have all this stuff filed up here. Here they are, this is what they look like. These are just twinkling H2Os, they come in these little pots and um, you can buy little sets of them. So I have like maybe three sets that I had gotten before um, they were actually um, given to me. So uh, once again, you know, they make pretty shimmering colors but you can't really paint with them. I didn't have any dark colors to do the you know the island and the trees with so um this was the angora watercolors so that's these these are really cheap and um here's what they look like that my daughter actually did this swatch and they're very um chalky and like dry you need to add a lot like you just need to add a lot of water and keep adding it because they just soak it up and dry out and um, I really don't like them. I bought these a very long time ago and I tried them and they were so bad I just figured I must hate watercolors and watercolors suck because they were so unpleasant to work with. <laughs> so I feel like I saw reviews that some people actually like these but I don't know how and I don't like them. I don't recommend them. I'm sorry Angora Company or whoever you are. Um, these are just some old, super old watercolors um, like you would get for kids. Um, basically, I got these when I was a kid, so these are super old. I'm not going to say exactly how old, but um, very, very old. <laughs> There's like, I don't know, they're from like the 80s or something probably. So that's that. It wasn't too horrible, but you know, it wasn't super special. These are the Prang. Um, so that's this set. And actually for like the cheapest watercolors you can find, um, um, I gave these to my kids now, I don't use them anymore, but these are not too bad. So if you want to like start with watercolors and spend a couple bu bucks, I would recommend these over like, you know, let's say Crayola ones. Like don't get the Crayola ones, get these ones. These ones are not that bad. Um, then these are the Winsor & Newton Professional watercolors. So I have a nice big set, and um, these are all the colors that I have. That's how they look. And I have to say, these are gorgeous, and they, they are wonderful. Um, you know, I made these cards using them, and they're just very, like, nice to work with. So that's that one. Then we have the hold bin which I really like these watercolors. Um, I've had these for a while. These were the first ones I bought like a year or a year and a half or so, maybe two years ago, to try working with watercolors. And um, they have, these actually go for a very good price on Amazon if you guys wanted to check them out. 
So if you want to start with watercolors and go a step above the cheapest options, um, these are more like in the medium range and they're very nice on Amazon. I think they're more expensive everywhere else. So that's the whole bin. These are the Shinhan. These also you can get for a great price on Amazon. And that's what, that's the swatch. That's what they look like. They're very um, vibrant. And like I said, you can get a pretty good price for them. I put these in a Tim Holtz palette. Um, so some of them are falling off a little bit. So these are pretty nice, but um, if you want like darker, more dramatic looks, these are very good for that. But they're also a little bit like less transparent, I think, some of them especially. And um, so that's something to think about. So depending on, you know, how, you know, advanced your techniques are or whatever, if you just want something bright and colorful, then these are great. If you want something with like advanced watercolor techniques where all the colors need to be super transparent, then that's probably not the way to go. These are the Prima Confections. And that's actually, I have them right here. I have like two different sets that I combined. So they stick out. I should put like little sticky tape on the bottom or something. There, sorry. <laughs> I actually really like these. These are bright and colorful. The only thing is they don't give any information as to, um, you know, how permanent they are, how color, um, like, resilient their color is and how well it will last over time there's no information on that so they work really well so if you want to do like art journaling or cards or things like that these are great they come at a great price they come in these adorable little containers um, you can get them on Amazon for like 15 or 20 dollars for like and it already comes in the container and you get a lot of great colors and they're very nice I have to say um, the colors themselves so that's another very affordable option um, if you're not going to be, you know, framing and like selling your artwork because, again, I don't know how permanent the colors are since they fail to provide any information on that. Then you have the Daniel Smith. These are also professional. I put them in this second little Prima container I had. These are all the colors I have. That's all I have. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is these... Um, um, these Primatech colors that are made out of real, um, like, stones, they dry up and they get very kind of crackly and then they fall out because <laughs> they dry up so bad. Um, but just just the Primatech line, like the one out of real, well, I guess the other ones did too a little bit. I don't oh, I came. So anyways, they all got they all fell out and got messed up. So, but um as far as colors go and as far as quality goes, the Daniel Smith are you know, up there with Winsor and Newton. So, I don't know. I might even like them a little bit more than Winsor and Newton. I'm not sure. I just love the colors and he offers so many colors. So, if you want to have like a professional collection, then you really can't go wrong with the Daniel Smith watercolors. Um, it's just, uh, just really gorgeous and very good quality paint that will definitely last. Now these are the Schmincke and I don't have that many Schmincke colors either. Um, this is, these are all the colors I have, just the original set. I was going to buy additional ones to fill the bottom spot, but after trying them, I like them, but I can't say I like them more than Windsor and Newton or Daniel Smith. So um, I feel like I like the Windsor Newton Daniel Smith more and I already had more of their colors so I didn't see any point to buying more of the Schmanko ones because um, they were nice in some ways but I wouldn't say they were better or so if you have like either Windsor Newton professional watercolors not the Cotman ones the professional ones or the Daniel Smith professional ones then there's really no point spending money on Schmanko or you know. So that's about it. So that's just a flip through of that. And then let me show you, I have swatches as well. So you can see what I'm talking about a little bit better. 
So these are the Schmenka. So you can see they, um, you know, the paint moves really nicely with the water. So I have the paint more solidly at the top and then more watery at the bottom just to see what it kind of does. So, but it's not like overly bright and vibrant. I mean, they are bright and vibrant and they're very nice. They're transparent. They're beautiful colors and beautiful paints. I have no complaints about them, but um, I think like these ones are more vibrant and these are the Daniel Smith ones. So these are the Primatec colors. And then these are um, the set of regular colors. And I also bought an extra one of the Quinacridone Gold. And then these are color combinations that I just did myself. Oops, sorry. Here's the Quinacridone Gold. And these are the combinations I did myself just very quickly. And this is what I love about the Daniel Smith colors is that look um, at how well they go together. Like you put colors together and they create these just any colors you put together just create this gorgeous new color <laughs> it doesn't turn into mud it doesn't like get weird it just creates a new beautiful vibrant rich color and not all paints do that um these are just very pure colors so when you put them together with other colors they just create new pure rich colors <laughs> if that makes sense so that's that and here are my uh Windsor Newton professional colors I do have a whole bunch of them because I bought a bunch extra and um you can see why I love them so much just look at how like vibrant the colors are I mean they're just so like it's like a color explosion or something. And I love this indigo. It's like so dark if you use it by itself. Um, like I will show you an example. Like here's a painting I did with the Windsor and Newton colors and here's the indigo. So it makes for these really nice stormy clouds. Um, but then it blends out so and then I also used a little bit of the indigo here because I used Windsor and Newton for all these cards as well. Um, just Windsor and Newton. So all of this is Windsor and Newton. So, oh, I already did that. that. That's something else. Oh, here's the Holbin ones. And these are very nice. Like I said, you know, very affordable and beautiful. That's something else, something else. Okay. So, and then finally, um, this video is getting overly long. I'll show you some in my watercolor journal. And I've been labeling them as to which watercolors I was using. So this is Schmenka. Wait, let me, nope, zoom out. So you guys can see even a little bit more. Okay. This is Schmenka. This is Shinhan. Like I said, you know, if you want nice, vibrant, dark, like rich colors for journaling, Shinhan are great. In terms of like a more professional something you would sell, I wouldn't, I don't know. They're probably not as permanent and they're also not as transparent, which makes them not as nice to work with in some ways. Um, Shinhan and Shinhan, both of these, like I said, great for journaling. And again, Shinhan and also Shinhan. I'm going backwards in my journal. So these two are Daniel Smith and these are the Primatech colors. Like look at how grainy it can be. It's so, it's such an awesome effect. Um, you don't really get that. It granulates. It was like, I guess the technical term granulates really beautifully. And you don't necessarily get that with, um, with like all other paints, you know, um, like, look, you can, here's the window. Like I used it there as well. Like it's just really, really neat. And I love the Daniel Smith paints. That's pencil. This is also Daniel Smith. You can see how vibrant the colors are. Right. 
This is Schmenka. This was Karan Ash, I think, mostly. So this is Schmenka. The Schmenka colors are more kind of, um, like, pleasant and natural. So if you like that effect, then I would say go for the Schmenka. Um, Windsor and Newton, nice and vibrant and bright again, which I like. And here Schmenka again, like, sort of, um, um, nice colors. You know what? I think the video is probably going to run out soon. So these are Windsor and Newton and Chin Han. This is also Windsor and Newton. You know what, guys? Um, this is um, Prima. So very nice. So if the video ends and it runs out, then like I said, check out the links that I'm adding. And also let me know if you want me to do a flip through of the whole um, journal. Because I've never gotten around to doing that. This is um, Prima. This is sort of mixed media. So that's all different ones. Um, mostly Karandi Ash, I think. This is Holbin. And I think all the other ones, these are all going to be Holbin because that's all I had when I first had the journal. So these are all Holbin. Th these are Karandi Ash. Holbin, Holbin. Everything's Holbin now. Holbin. So I guess I don't need to, this is acrylics actually, and this is Karandi Ash. I don't need to do a flip through now because I basically just flip through it. <laughs> so, Holbin, Holbin, um, Holbin, Holbin, and Holbin with acrylics. So that's basically it. I hope you guys found the video useful and helpful. In summary, I would say if you have to pick you know, like a professional one, go with Windsor & Newton Professional or, um, or Daniel Smith. And if you want like a medium range one, then I would say go with Holbin. And if you want like an, a slightly cheaper option, then go with Prima. And if you want the cheapest option, then um, go with the Prang. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And like I said, please um, check out my store and my page and all that. And just like me on Facebook and things like that. And, you know, you don't have to buy anything. You can just go look and give me some feedback. Thanks. Bye.